Hi everyone, and welcome into the Rochester Press Box. Bill Pucko, happy to be with you. Happy to be seeing Kevin Klubs again. Accept the compliments. This is one of the most probably more hockey than anybody who's not actually in the business in this town. Great hockey writer, pick and splinters. Uh, we can still read you, which is uh, for a hockey yeah. fan is a real blessing. And it's well, believe me, I, you know my my real job, my daytime job at the Rochester Business Journal. I run into a lot of people who say, "Oh man, I miss your Emmerich stuff." I look at them like, "You miss it." <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk Emmerich pretty soon. Uh, USA. Well, okay, Pat Duffy. World Championships are going on right now. Alex talked Buffalo Zone getting in a fight in an international <laughs> hockey tournament. But when Kevin's on, I have to wear the jerseys that he appreciates. The Brian Gianta, I believe it was Italy Olympic jersey, and I think Chelios was the captain because. I made sure to bust Brian's chops about would the sea fall off this thing when it was shipped through the mail? Like, what happened here? <laughs> Very cool. Let's talk Amherst. Uh, as you know, they got through a, a great first round, losing the first two, winning the next three, they're stretching this thing out enough so that we can actually talk about it, which is nice. Yes. What should we look for in this team? Um, I just think it's fun to watch the growth of the young kids. There was a time when teams couldn't advance and needed that veteran presence, and you still do, but the last couple of years, it's the kids who have really stepped it up. And, and you know, J.J. Paterka in the playoffs last year was unbelievable. The 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 growth of, of Itzhak Rosean and Yuri Kulik and Tyson Kozak the last two, three months has been incredible. It, it's I think it's just amazing. If you watch the speed of Rosean and go, how can he be so fast? Like, he's amazingly fast. And you didn't necessarily notice it early because he wasn't quite sure what to do with that speed and where he needed to go. But, you know, down the ice, getting back. Tyson Kozak is a seventh-round draft pick who has, he has a future. Like, he hits, he can skate, he's not scared of anyone, wins face-offs. I, I, I just think this team is fun to watch. And the kids have really, it's their enthusiasm, and then it's the veterans, Ethan Prow and Michael Mersch and, and Sean Malone saying, yeah, you know, to tame it down just a little. <laughs> I'll tell you what the change is here compared to other runs in the last couple of years. Your goaltender knows he's an AHL goaltender for this franchise, right? Because in the years past, you had Uka Pekalukin and you had Linus Allmark where they're performing, but they know that they're trying to audition for a better job. I don't think Malcolm Subban at this moment is under the impression that he has a potential to play in Buffalo next year. He's playing really, really well. It's the confidence of a veteran backstop who's been through more intense situations than this before. I think if you're going to pick one thing that's different this season, it's Malcolm Subban. And just the, the, and that's a big part of it. It's just that, I mean, he's a big part of the team chemistry and what, you know, the team belief and what they do as a group. And, and I think that's a, that's a good point that, they rally around him. He underst I mean, he's not panicking, even in a bad game. It's like, all right, I'll make the next save when we need it. Believe it. And and guys know that. But you know, playoff atmosphere really that's playoff atmosphere really exists, it seems, to this team. Which back in the days when they were competing on a regular basis for a Calder Cup championship, you were playing before next to nobody because the season ticket holders were right. The that, season ticket so now holder base different. fell off, and it was two thousand, three thousand for the other rounds. Well, this and then is it would great, gradually right? grow. They had ten thousand on a midweek game for the game three wow. against Syracuse. They, last year they had the same type of. Um, I, that's. I was very concerned. I know a lot of people were concerned about where this franchise was headed as far as its place in the community and without the Chris Taylors and the Dominic Pittis and Jody Gage mm -hmm. and Jim Jackson and guys who the veteran presence who were the identity of the franchise, the face of the franchise that sold tickets, it has come to the, now it's the young kids sell. And there's a new fan base that there are more Quinn jerseys and Paterka jerseys and Roseanne and Kulik. And and hmm. that wasn't always the case before. The, it, the It's kind of changed and the kids are what's selling it now. You, you got to have talented kids. You're not going to get by with guys that can't play. But, but. That's, but that's the difference. You have talented kids that are cooking in Rochester now. I mean, for the last 10 years, you had Reinhardt and Eichel and Darlene and Nylander. All those guys go up almost immately. And here you had Novotny and Zagrapan and Krebs. Exactly. Or, uh, uh, not guys that, uh, from, I'm sorry, I'm trying to think of the Panthers guy. Um, you know, higher picks that didn't make it. Yeah. And didn't have that identity that fans gravitated to, and these kids have, you know, taken off. I have two things that need uh, two things that need quick answers because we're running out of time in the segment. First, can they do it? And second, why has it been so long? Is it something within the structure of the American Hockey League that conspires against Rochester? No, but I'm, there are some franchises that the, the veterans still help, and others did have that, and they also had better draft picks. Some franchises were were 
further along and more well established as far as what they had up top, Buffalo's had to rush guys way too often. And and it's 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 hurt development. So you don't have the same young talent here, and they didn't have the same veteran talent either. So it's it's working within a thirty team league now, thirty whatever mm. it is now. Um, but it is tough to win. Can this team win it? No. But who knows? Oh, I mean, that for that? I mean, like an uh, honest answer. I, I have no problem with the excitement of a playoff run and what can they do next and. They can probably beat Toronto, but, you know, who's up next? I don't know. It's hard to see when you never see the Win whole league. Win in advance. Win in advance. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, we are watching the Rochester Press Box. We're talking Buffalo Bills next. I have some travel books, volume one, volume two. You'll be, be able to get one of these books for free when you buy the new volume two for only $14.95. Contact me at MikeTheGetawayGuy at gmail.com. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us here on the Rochester Press Box, our Buffalo Bill segment brought to you by Ralph Honda. For three generations celebrating 50 years as New York's first and oldest Honda dealer. Visit Ralph Honda today. Find out how we do Honda right at ralphhonda.com. Uh, Buffalo Bills are going to play Jacksonville in London. Uh, they're not the only ones going, buddy. The hotel is booked. No. Me and the family. I'm going to be broadcasting live from England uh, the oh, week after the a, game. It's a work trip. No, it's not. We're actually going as a family, my wife and my <laughs> kids. Going to the game, and then I'm, my wife wants to go spend time in England, so we're going to spend well, five Well, outside days of there. the aesthetics of the Nice. Nice. The first thing that strikes me is the Jacksonville stay in there. They're playing the week before, and then they're playing the, the Bills. I, I don't really love that. No, I hate that, as a matter of fact. I mean, you know, part of the argument for having these games is both teams will be at the same disadvantage. Now, Jacksonville seems to have a foothold in the London market. One, because of their owner, Shad Khan. Two, because nobody goes to Jacksonville. I was going to say, they have a better foothold there than they do in Jacksonville. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't like the idea that Jacksonville is going to be able to play Atlanta, stay for an entire week, and be well-adjusted to that time difference before they play the Bills, Should right? the league not be concerned? Like, how do you pull two regular season games away from your fan base? I, I think it's bizarre. It is strange. And they keep going. No, I'm with you, but where do you put them? I mean, let's say, that, let's say I mean, it seems like this is just the slow play to put Jacksonville as one of the teams that will eventually be playing in a European division. But to answer your first question, the only thing that evens this out is maybe having to be away from home for that long, which NFL teams never have to do, yeah. plays a negative, but I don't love it. And they'll couch it. Because they always do with the schedule. I mean, they'll, they'll give Buffalo a little bit of breathing room. I hope so. But you look at the rest of the schedule, and as we take this, we don't have it coming out here, right? Like, maybe the easiest game of the season is at home the next week. You play back-to-back -back home games, uh, technically. But Bengals, uh, Eagles, Chiefs, Jets twice, Dolphins twice. All I'm not even getting into the teeth of the schedule. The Cowboys. What is the easy team that you could put when you come back from England? Who is yeah. it? I, I'm assessing that you know, in the, in the bigger picture, because we don't get a lot of football takes from you. Is you don't like the whole European thing at all? I don't mind it. I, I really don't. I mean, it is it is growing the league. It's all about growth. It, it, do, do they end up with teams playing it based in Europe that are part of this league? Maybe, but. I don't have a problem with it. It's kind of, to be honest, I kind of like getting up at seven, you know, watching it yeah. at nine thirty. It becomes a long day of because right otherwise you'd sleep in the chair. <laughs> yeah, but I just, I, I have the problem with how do you, how do you take, you know, twenty five percent of your home games. I guess it's more now, sorry. But. Yeah, well, what helps now, yeah, the extra game at home helps, right? The Bills aren't technically losing a home game. We're going to have eight well, home Jacksonville, away. Jacksonville, though, I don't get it. Oh, like, that how one, do yes. they just, they had, they had good, they had a pretty good following. They really built something last year as the playoffs went along. And, and you just, can't say it's not working if you don't give it a chance. Right. But to, to pluck two games out of that schedule and say, yeah, we'll be back like in November. Have fun. I'll tell you what it is. It's money, you're <laughs> right? The guys in, the guys at Wembley and Tottenham, which are the two stadiums they'll be playing, are going to spend more money than, you know, the folks that live in Jacksonville. And if you've ever been to Jacksonville, you understand what I'm saying. There. Yeah, and they're going to Germany, too. Yeah, so which the, that's the other interesting part, is they're giving Europe better games now. That Bill's Jacksonville game, those two division winners, that's going to be a really good game, two young quarterbacks. Right, it used to be the... <laughs> The then, worst of the, you know, the, the bad teams would go, okay, you got to go. And then even in Germany, right? Like, you're getting 
Dolphins, you're getting Chiefs. Like these are prime time matchups that might be in either at least the focus time on Sundays or a Thursday to Sunday night matchup. They're playing, being played yeah, here. They certainly seem to be serious about it. So we'll get a chance next week to break down the schedule game by game. But uh, that's 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 the start. Oh, I saw it. Bills are seventeen and zero. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Which is way over because it's ten and a half in Vegas. So then take the over. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Take the over. Thirteen. Yeah. Minus a game because of the whole bag. Were they thing. 13? 13 what? and 3. Ooh, what, what, did you what was the line? Oh, that I don't have. I had him at 17 and 0, but there were some things in there that didn't work out <laughs> the right way. Our uh, Buffalo Bill segment was brought to you by Ralph Honda. Like it or not, it's next. Here's the Press Box trivia question brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road. in Corning, New York that gets overlooked all the time waiting till you see the treasures inside. I'll take you there, Mike O'Brien, your getaway guy. Just look for the getaway guy on Facebook. Here's a Press Box trivia answer brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road at 390. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us here on the Rochester Press Box. Our Like It or Not segment is brought to you by Sport Clips, where the MVP experience is better than ever. Sport Clips, the pros and men's hair. No appointments are necessary. Stop by a Rochester location today. Like it or not, Connor Bedard, the next big thing in hockey is uh, first round draft pick is going to the Chicago Blackhawks in the lottery. He is a big thing. He's he's so good. Well, he's, he's, actually, he's, he's actually a little thing, but he's well, a big thing in a little package. He, yes, exactly. And t in today's game, that's fine because you know the NHL has gone that way. And the skill, I just think it's it's so amazing how much better, how much more skilled and faster players are now than just five years ago and ten years ago. You look back to the old. I mean, oh, holy cow! But yes, it's huge for the Blackhawks. It's a it's a, you know, it's like it's the, the Anaheim Ducks are the Buffalo Sabers. They get Jack Eichel. Okay, it was a it was a consolation prize, but he also didn't have the right attitude to help the franchise get past where it was. Now he does. Now he's lighting it up in Vegas. So this he's is the most, the, the but most, he is the best player, the most hyped guy for since Connor McDavid. I mean, correct. Did, did you make that comparison? Yes, absolutely. He's a seventeen year old kid. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's, it's interesting to that point. I mean, like, he's still growing as a human being. You know, McDavid was a more complete prospect coming in. And don't, I'm not taking anything away from Adar. Like, the kid can score, the kid can skate. It's amazing. But McDavid had size. McDavid might be the greatest skater on planet Earth. I mean, Bedard yeah, is... A, and I'm not saying Bedard is McDavid, but he's the best since then. But that's my fear here, is that as the NHL is getting more exposure and they're trying to make themselves more relevant, that every year we're going to see someone who gets compared to McDavid or Crosby and Ovechkin. But it's But that's happened... They were compared to Gretzky. They were. They were. He's the next Gretzky. Yeah, he's uh, the next Messier. Okay. He's the next. Coffee. All of the next Gretzkys never became legitimate NHL players, and that's my fear for this kid. Is there's undue pressure on top of being the first. They all seem to come through though, because all the big names and they came up with that much hype. They all won Stanley Cups. Uh, and I'm not, and I'm not going to say that that the pressure he's faced or coming Gretzky up all along, but he has been the kid, the that. guy. Every year okay. since whenever. Okay, you know better than I do. So hey, he's been put like on a, that pulpit, that stage. Since he was eight or whatever. Quick like it or not, on the uh, the PGA is in town. This is the most ridiculous thing ever, right, man? Like, <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, well, no, it is. Look, it's great. It's a Super Bowl for here. It's really exciting to have a sporting event of this caliber in town and having the golfers walking around, right, in the quaint Pittsburgh Village. I do enjoy the backbending that Pittsburgh and Monroe County has done to, like, make our county and Pittsburgh look like the best little place. Have you noticed they finally picked up the garbage on 390 near the airport? Like, this first time I live, uh, I live right off of Scottsville Road there at Henrietta. Like, I haven't seen that in forever. Also, my favorite story of the last two weeks, people in Pittsburgh that live on Kilbourne going into Oak Hill are only allowed to park 15 cars on their lawn, charged from one guy, had 50 spots he was going to sell every I, day. He's out, like, five grand. How many of those guys, how many of those people need? that money. Uh, what are you talking about? Just hard-working, middle-class Pittsburgh Some, folks that live down the street from Oak Hill. I, I, it sounds bad, I know. I always oh, thought, here okay, it. here's the people to, Don't along, preface along, along, along Jefferson Road that are parking 50, 70 cars because they have this huge lawn. You know, if you just walk through there and count it and then 
just ask the IRS if they did this guy, you know, report X amount of income. Of course you would be that guy. Of course you would be that guy. <laughs> things you don't hear anywhere else. How <laughs> Like It or Not segment was brought to you by Sport Clips. Unfinished Business is next. page has been turned. The Press Box Stat of the Week is being brought to you by McArdle's Restaurant in Fairport. Come home to McArdle's. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us here on the Rochester Press Box. Our unfinished business segment is brought to you by the Tennessee Brew House, your beer destination since 2012. Visit the gift shop, enjoy tasting at our pilot brewery, and dine at the Pubstale Restaurant at the Tennessee Brew House. Unfinished business starts pat. Somehow we are not giving LeBron James the respect that he deserves. And I'm not even saying this season. I'm talking about career-wise. He's arguably the greatest basketball player of all time. Don't tweet at me. I understand there's a debate to be had. But LeBron James is doing things in almost 40 years old style that... We've never seen players his age do before, right? We've seen Kareem play long, and that was really exciting. We saw uh, Will do the same thing. However, they weren't leading their team the way LeBron James is. And think about this. This guy had nothing but height from the moment he came out of high school. High school kid into the NBA, and he never disappointed. He was supposed to be great, and he became great. He was doing it as really the first superstar of the social media generation with no one helping him, just figuring it out along the way. This guy has won multiple championships. He did it without any kind of scandal. He seems like a really good dad, a really good family guy. He's someone who it seems like you could have a beer with and get along with really well. And... He's continuing to do it. He's going to play with his son in the NBA at some point. Now, I love taking shots at LeBron and the kind of game that he plays. But when it comes to off the court and what we expected of him of, and what he's become, it's amazing. I guess it's easier to eclipse expectations than live up to the ones that folks dropped on you as a teenager. If you happen to go catch the Rochester Red Wings, you'll notice on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, the umpire behind the plate, he's still calling balls and strikes, but he's not really because there's a computer telling him, mm, that's strike. And right away he says, strike. I love it. I didn't think I would. But if you watch Major League Baseball lately, you have seen some of the most egregious strike calls and ball calls ever. And I'm tired of it. If we have the technology that can go to robo umpires behind the plate, that eliminates the, the batter getting frustrated because the pitch outside is now put him in a one and two count. And now he's worried about that call and not... The, it takes the frustration away from the pitcher. He knows it's a strike. If it was called a strike, it's a strike. He can't argue it. He's not going to give up the two-run homer on the next pitch because he walked a guy on a strike that the umpire called the ball. Let's just use the technology. I love it. We're in the midst of the dark ages for Rochester's two longest-standing foundational professional sports teams. Facts are facts. Between them, the Rochester Americans hockey and the Rochester Red Wings baseball teams have gone a combined 53 years without winning a championship. 1996 was 27 hockey seasons ago. The Moore Memorial hadn't been rebranded yet. There was still a stage occupying the south end of the arena. The Emmerichs that year were led by Craig Sharon and Dixon Ward. Steve Shields was the goalie. After a 500 season and a third place finish in the American Hockey League Central Division, the team caught fire. Rochester won 11 out of 12 playoff games on its way to the Calder Cup Finals in a grueling seven-game championship series with the Portland Pirates. On June 13th, the Amherst beat the Pirates 2-1 to one before a deliriously packed house downtown to win their sixth and most recent Calder Cup. A calendar year later, the Rochester Red Wings won their 19th championship and 10th Governor's Cup by beating the Columbus Clippers three games to two. Third baseman P.J. Forbes made a diving game five saving catch coming in on a ball. Pitcher Rick Krivda was 14-2. We were spoiled back then. Between 1987 and 1997, the Amherst and the Red Wings combined for five championships. Since then, nothing. These droughts are historic. 27 years for the Americans, the longest previous was 14. For the Wings, who trace their history all the way back to 1899, their 26-year drought is nine years longer than the 17-year wait between 1911 and 1928, when they were the Rochester Hustlers, Colts, and Tribe playing in the Eastern League. 
Remember that, Kevin? <laughs> Nighthawks lacrosse and Rochester Rhinos Punch soccer have had their moments since, but you have to be nearly 40 years old to remember the last time that we partied like it's 1996. That's our Unfinished Business, brought to you by the Genesee Brew House, and that is our program. Great Kevin, to be thanks. here again. Yeah, it's good to have you, man. Great to be here. Good to have you, man. You're always here. Great yeah. to have you here, too. Join us again next week on the Rochester Press Box. Wow. <laughs> I've come to like LeBron. Me too. I hated him, but I like him. I didn't like him early in the career, but I've come to like him. <laughs>